Perfect. Hayden, thank you for joining us today. Um, I know you've got a bit of a story as well as to how Finbase came about. I know you were a, a trader and I, I, from what I hear, a, a pretty bloody good trader at that. Um, you're so good, you're able to, to work with lots of investors. And in the end, you said, actually, how can we, how can I help other investors to get access to these investors? And I believe that's the story Finbase came about. Do you want to dive deeper and, and give a little bit of you know depth to that story? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so as Karen said, I did, did quite a bit of trading um, over the last sort of three years. Um, and that was that was really fun, really good. But we we always found getting finance was, you know, one of the, the big roadblocks. And I just thought, surely, you know, surely we can we can make a solution that sort of solves that for people. So we had we had a number of private investors that we were sort of using to fund our deals and we sort of got them together and um off the back of that we've yeah created Finbase. So we, we do short term asset lending now for people who are looking to fund similar types of deals that we were trading ourselves a couple of years ago. So that's I guess that's the in a real short summary, that's that's how it all sort of came about. Perfect. And are you still trading yourself now? Uh not trading at the moment. No, I'm just just really focusing on I like to focus on one thing at a time. I find if you do one thing at a time, you do it well. If you do too many things, it just doesn't nothing works. <laughs> found that a few times. Some wise words there can tell you that. Um I'm I'm definitely cutting off a few of the things I've been doing to just bring it back into a consolidating and, and doing one thing well, like I hear you there. Um, so tell us a little, little bit more about Finbase. You said short-term asset lending. So we're, we're really talking the flipping or, or maybe small developments here, right? We're not talking about long-term buy and hold. Yeah, correct, correct, Karen. So um, just anything up to 12 months sort of thing, just short-term in and out, a trade deal with an exit strategy. So we don't really look at the income as much. We just, what we really look at is what's the what's the security asset and what's the exit strategy so we just we've done short term to sort of fill that gap in the market the stuff that banks don't really like to do so yeah that's, so sort of, that's sort of where we we play in that area when when you say the security um or or asset lending as opposed to to general lending um what exactly do you mean uh so we, we just look at the the property which the loan is being secured against um, so a lot of lenders will look at sort of the servicing and how's the interest being paid. We we look more at how much sort of you know how much um, how much equity is in the deal that we're lending on. Um, so we we basically just looking at is there sufficient equity in the in the deal that we're comfortable with to lend against, and we lend up to sort of sixty sometimes sixty five percent of the value of the security asset. Okay, perfect. So let's say, um, you know, I'm I'm 20 years old. I I don't want to go get a job because why why would you? Uh, I want to get out into markets, be flipping deals. You know, you've done done the wealth mentor mentorship, so you know, all clued up, know how to know how property works, etc. You're saying that you guys wouldn't even care that I don't have an income. All you'd care is that if I'm buying a five hundred thousand dollar property then there's what i should have chosen an easier number if i chose a million dollar property uh then you'd go up to about six hundred thousand so there we go you'd go to about three hundred thousand on a 500k property right and then as long as i've got that other 200k and as long as i can show the actual process and, and realistic numbers of what the exit strategy is then you guys are pretty happy to fund it yeah correct man yeah yeah we, we totally get it that you know the the profit at the end of the deal is, is what people use to repay the loan. And I've been in that position so many times and sometimes it can be sort of, you know, frustrating <laughs> trying to say that this is a good deal, you know, and the lender just won't do it. Um, so yeah, correct. We, we look at the value of the asset, lend an amount of it. We don't worry so much about uh, the servicing income. It's just more the exit strategy. So yeah, if you're in that, you know, in that category, 20, like a 20 year old, doing a trade deal and you've got a good plan it can that can work for that oh perfect and so what if i've got existing property would you leverage against would you take security over other properties in order to do 100 percent lending yeah for sure so if you've got if you've got say two properties you already own one and you wanted to buy another one um provided you know provided 
there's enough equity in the other property we could we could essentially 100 percent finance another new purchase but we'd take security over both properties so the existing and the current you know the current purchase yeah so this would work um not just for someone looking to flip um but also someone if they're looking to get another property they want to use the asset lending in order to to buy the property they want to add some sort of value or or develop or add cash flow income streams and then refinance with a mainstream bank then that would be a, a strategy that would work for them as well yeah yeah that's correct yeah as as long as the purpose of the borrowing is for investment or business purposes we can we can lend so we don't we don't lend you know if someone's looking to device over a family home or something like that it's just investment investment type deals yeah what about if i want to go on holiday uh, <laughs> uh it's, it's got to be investment just yeah i got a property to get the profit to then go on holiday got it <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Um, so because you are asset lenders, um, obviously, like, well, how do you guys make money? I know there's interest rates. There's no doubt fees as well. Yeah. What 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 would it, what would we typically be looking at paying um, for the use of that money? Yeah, great question. Um, so we we charge the rate starts from 11 percent per annum. It's a fixed rate, so you're not going to have any rate rate hikes throughout the term of the the loan and you know exactly how much you're going to be paying um yeah i think a lot of other lenders do floating uh so the the interest rate yep is interest rate and then the we charge also a lender fee which starts one and a half to sort of two percent depending on the deal um so it's interest rate and lender fee lender fee just gets capitalized in with the loan and that lender fee is repaid at the end of the term and the interest is typically paid monthly Although we can sometimes capitalize interest in a deal just to, just depending on the deal again. Okay. So that's mm. yeah, that's pretty good. Um and then you're you're essentially a broker in all this, aren't you? I, well, actually, are you a, a licensed broker or are you is this a fund strategy? How what's your role in this relationship, I guess? Yeah, no. No good question. Um, so no, Funbase is a finance company. Um, so Funbase registers the mortgage against the security asset. So we essentially we receive borrower applications for finance, and we just present these opportunities to our database of investors. An investor says yes, I'm keen to fund it, and then we will send the borrower a letter of offer, and get their solicitor to prepare the loan documents, and we register a mortgage. So Funbase registers. A mortgage against the property and then when that loan is repaid we discharge the mortgage um yeah and then the proceeds yeah. are paid back to the borrower okay perfect so unlike what most of our students are, are quite used to which is um you know working with a broker you're the actual finance company you've got a number of private investors how that works in the background we don't actually care we don't need to know you've Correct. got whatever legal documents agreements all we need to know is that by working with you by working with finbase um finbase is a it would be a, a agreement between us and finbase and finbase will be the one putting the first mortgage on the property yeah yeah that's correct yeah perfect okay, perfect and if for example um back to that case of a 20 year old you know we're, we're talking um buying a five hundred thousand dollar property you'll lend potentially 300,000. If I was to go to someone else to get the 200,000 to, to add it up to that 500,000, do you guys care? No, it's totally fine. As long as we can register a first mortgage, it doesn't matter how you fund the balance. So if you go to your you know, friends or family or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. And if that balance was registered as a second mortgage, again, you don't care? No, it's, it's all good. It's fine. As long as, as long as you're first in line. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we're first mortgage. It's all good. Doesn't we're not, we're not fussed about how you raise the second. Okay. The balance. Cool. Well, that um that makes things pretty easy. Um, do you guys do pre-approvals at all? We don't do pre-approvals at the moment, which is a bit of a bugger. Um, maybe in the future, but not at this time. No, just yeah, just simple unconditional deals. But if you okay. if you wanted to float something past us, you know, I'm happy as to look at it and give you sort of an indicative offer but it wouldn't be like a, a formal letter of offer 
So um, how would how would the process typically work? I go out, I've found the deal that I'm interested in, I can see, you know, I can buy it for 500,000. I can see I can add $200,000 worth of value to it. Um, what what would the standard process be then? Um, if you just contact me and just say, look, I'm looking to buy this property, would you lend on it? That's probably the first question. And the second question is, would you how much would you lend on it? And I can just give you a guide, you know, indicative terms um and we can turn it around fairly quickly you know we can probably give you a letter of offer on the same day if you've got something that you've bought and it's you know it's going ahead the reason we don't do pre-approvals is we do get a lot of applications and we present these to our uh, investor base and we don't really want to present them with deals that aren't going ahead just because it's a lot of you know they they look at the deal and think you know they do a little bit of their own research before agreeing to fund it so I just don't really want to waste their time too much and just only give them deals that are actually going ahead. But we've got a good idea of sort of what they like and don't like. So if we do give you an indicative offer, it's, you know, it's usually pretty pretty much what we're going to offer. So you said um, you said unconditional before. Do I need to be unconditional or can I have a conditional contract based upon finance and then come to you for finance? Oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. Don't, don't be one of those guys running around, putting out 20 different offers, getting 20 contracts and then presenting you with 20 different things. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 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 That all, that all makes sense then. Um, you said, you know, we can just get in touch with you or whatever. How would people get in touch with you? Um, I'll give you my details, just phone number or an email is fine, um, or a website, probably just phone or email is probably the best way, but I'll give that to you, Kyra, and you can share that with anyone who wants to, you know, wants to know. No worries. I've got the power now, team. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll pass those on and, and, you know, be able to, uh, help people get in touch with you. Um, so then what sort of information do you need up front? What would that sort of perfect application look like? Um, the one which, you know, bearing in mind you are a, a private company. Um, if if you don't like someone or they're too much of a hassle, I imagine you're like, yeah, bottom of the list. So how do we how do we get to the top of your list or become that perfect client for you? Sure. Um, I guess track record's helpful, you know, if, if you've got a good track record, it's it's going to be good just makes it easier you know we're confident in your abilities um all we really need i think i said before just the address of the property being lent against um the entity that you're looking to buy it in what your plan is with the property just just a few bullet points you don't have to you know do a full write-up on what you're doing with it and then just how you're going to repay the loan and usually it's sell it for the people who are trading um i think Lot, the lower the LBR, like if you don't if you don't need sixty percent, if, if you can do like a you know forty percent loan to value ratio, that that'll definitely get a lot of our investors keen. They're really happy to fund, you know, sixty percent. It's it's quite conservative, but if it's lower than that, we definitely have a lot of people that are keen on that. Um, but yeah, it's probably those things. Just we just need property address, the entity you're buying it in, the exit strategy, and what your plan is um that's pretty much it yeah what about registered valuations anything like that uh if it's just been bought we can go off purchase price um so not required if it's also if it's just a small loan like let's just say you've got a property which you own for a million you know it's worth a mil and you're wanting 200 grand just to go and do something we won't ask you to get a registered valuation on that like it's just a unnecessary cost um so i guess the answer registered valuation case by case sometimes we might ask for it but we often don't actually ask for it if we're comfortable with the thing that you're proposing the funds to be lent on okay and do you do your own desktop valuations yeah we can, we can do this as well yeah 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 okay perfect um makes things easy then mm -hmm. um is there a maximum you would loan like so say let's uh our 20 year old goes out and finds the perfect development property and you know suddenly needs 10 million dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
something. <laughs> first, first case, probably don't do it. But you know, is, is there a maximum you would loan to? And, and is there even a minimum that you would loan? Uh, minimum, we can do pretty small loans. Um, around $100,000 loans, which a lot of companies won't really do because it's, I think it's just not worth the paperwork for them. But we're happy to do real small loans, so 100 grand. Um, biggest loan, we can go more than 2 million. I think our biggest loan's been around 2 million at the moment, but we have got the capacity to do bigger loans than that. This comes down to the deal, really. You know, if it's, a, if it's an amazing deal, then for sure we could look at it. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Well, to be honest, that's probably most of the questions I have. No doubt the um, the community will have a few questions as well. Um, but yeah, as you say, I mean, it's it's asset lending. It's it's pretty simple. You, you've you got a lot of trading experience, so you know uh, a, what a good deal would look like and whether it would be financed versus what a shit deal might look like and, you know, mm -hmm. be able to sort of help that side, I suppose. Um, are there any? Is there any last um, thoughts or, or you know, something that we might need to know as a, a potential borrower? Not really. Not really. It's it's um it's pretty straightforward. I guess I'm I'm just happy to look at it. you know if anyone is looking for the finance for a deal, I'm just really happy to look at it and have a yarn. So feel free to get in touch if you want. You know, just just another person to look at it or try and get you the funds perfect that's um super easy super brilliant to have you on board as as part of the power team and i know this is a, a product which is going to make things a lot easier for a lot of people given uh everything happening in the current economic environment and how hard the banks are at the moment so thanks for everything you're doing and um yeah really looking forward to um working with you guys in the future cheers awesome all right thanks Karen. cheers mate